Alright, so over the years I've gotten plenty of recommendations from you guys, and I've also, you know, gone out searching for my own books to read at some points, and I've come across, you know, tons that I'm just not interested in for one or another, and so I figured, you know what, I'll just make this video. It's like books I'll never read, and I don't mean ones that I'm not interested in when I say this. I mean stuff that I'm not interested in, and I'm like actively avoiding it for one reason or another. You know, some of these I just feel like they've been overdone and I, there's not anything new I can say about it. Some of them, the plot or whatever just sounds really stupid and I don't feel like spending time on it. And others are for like more specific reasons. Anyways, I don't think I need to explain the title too much, so let's just let's just go over this list. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So the first book I'll never read is Trigger Warning by J.A. Johnstone. And this one, it was kind of big when it first came out because people saw it and thought it was hilarious. And then Jenny Nicholson and Crimson Rogue both did videos on it. And I don't think there's anything new I can really add. Like... I know I said for years that I would never do Onision's books, and then I wound up doing them, but the reason I wasn't going to do them is because other people had already talked about them ad nauseum, and I don't think I... I didn't think I had anything else to add, and the only reason I eventually went around to reading them was because I felt I finally found a way to, uh, to approach it, you know? A, a different way to approach it. And whether I succeeded in that or not is up to the audience to, to decide, but with Trigger Warning, I don't think there's anything new I can really do there, and it sounds like a dumb book that I wouldn't enjoy. And, uh, the sequel baiting at the end doesn't seem to have panned out, so if that... If they ever make sequels, I might just go through the, the series, why not? But I don't think that'll happen. Next up, Tower of Dawn and Assassin's Blade. These are two books in the Throne of Glass series, which I already did a whole long in-depth uh, go-over of that series, which is, like, almost three hours long in total. But I skipped over Tower of Dawn, which was book six in the series, because you don't actually need to read that one. Like, it takes place simultaneously with uh, book five, it's just with a different group of characters who are off doing their own thing. And it might be an amazing story, but you don't really need to know about it in order to read the rest of it, and I kind of just wanted to get, be done with it as soon as I could, so I skipped over that one, and I'm never going back because those books are long and miserable. And Assassin's Blade is a prequel, it's actually a couple of short stories about Aelin's time as an assassin, and again, might be better, and this one you actually kind of do have to read in order to get the full story, but I'm not particularly interested in getting the full story at this point, and the fact that you have to read a spin-off in order to understand the main series is kind of shitty anyways, so yeah, just, there's no more value that can be gleaned from these. Hawk. Now, this is the book that is like, the sequel to Maximum Ride. You know, a while ago I did a video on the entire Maximum Ride series and how it finally ended at Maximum Ride Forever. And there's people in the comments, uh, like a year later, saying, oh, actually they're making a new one. It focuses on Max and Fang's daughter. And one, I don't think that's really part of the same series at that point. That feels more like a sequel or a spin-off because it's focusing on different characters. And two, it's the same thing. I don't think there's anything of value that can be added for, for me at this point. Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Now this one, this one's gonna get me some hate, I can already tell, but the thing is, I love the Lord of the Rings movies, and as a result, I have tried to read the books many times. I think five or six times I've started Fellowship of the Ring, and I have never made it past Tom Bombadil. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to hate on Tolkien or the series too much here, because I think it's foundational for epic fantasy, and without Lord of the Rings, a lot of books that I do love would never have existed in the first place, so I'm forever grateful to it for that, but by this point, I've read so much, like, postmodern stuff, or modern stuff, I maybe? I don't, I don't know exactly what the term would be for that, but, you know, fantasy that has changed and evolved and has worked a little better with modern society as opposed to this old stuff, which is still good, but we've kind of seen that story before, at least I've seen it before a bunch of times, and so going through Tolkien's really, really crappy prose, which, I, okay, crappy is kind of mean, it's just, it's not my cup of tea, and he constantly goes off on tangents, and kind of, it feels almost like he wrote the story just as an excuse to show everybody uh, Middle Earth, really. And, I mean, that's fine, I totally get that, like, he created this whole world, wanted to show it off, and again, it's foundational to the fantasy genre, so I'm grateful for, to him for that, but it's just, 
it, it's hard to get into when it feels like the story and characters are almost kind of secondary, and it, the constant tangents just, I don't know, I didn't like it. And The Hobbit, pretty much the same thing. I, I tried reading it, and that one's aimed more at kids, so it has more of a fairy tale feel, and I just, I just wasn't into it, so yeah, I'm probably never reading those. Fifty Shades of Grey and The Mister. Now this one, Fifty Shades of Grey has been done to death. Like, there's nothing new I can add here. We've made fun of it, we've analyzed it in a serious manner, we've pointed out all its flaws, we've pointed out the few things it does well. It's like, I, I can't add anything else here. And The Mister has not been overdone nearly as much, but I'm, I'm just not interested in it, you know? And it's heyday, or when I say heyday, I mean Fifty Shades is heyday. It's, it's long past, you know? E.L. James is probably gonna continue to write, and I'm probably just gonna continue to shrug my shoulders at it and say, meh, who cares? And, um, her books are just kind of porn anyways. You know, after a certain point, like, sure, you can make fun of it, but after a certain point, talking about it in such a serious manner just feels asinine. Any memoirs written by celebrities? Now, I have a broad definition of celebrities here because I'm including, like, traditional, like, movie stars, actors, singers, that sort of thing, but I'm also including, uh, the newer internet celebrities like YouTubers, Vine stars, that sort of thing, because they also like to write memoirs. And, uh, the thing is, th th they're pointless. It, it would be pointless for me to read those, you know? It's just people who are ultra-wealthy and famous and beautiful, usually, are pretending to be relatable to the rest of us plebeians, and they usually don't have anything of value to say. They sometimes have lived kind of interesting lives, but usually not. And so, like, when they write fiction, being up their own asses can lead to some hilarious results. But when they try writing just, hey, here's the story of my life while still being up their own ass and trying to paint themselves in the best light possible, it, it's just not fun to read, so no. The Handmaid's Tale. Now, I'm also including its recently released sequel in here. And the thing is about this, I don't think I disagree with the overall message. In fact, I, th I agree pretty strongly. Like, Margaret Atwood was basically saying this is how the religious right thinks of women, and yeah, I, I agree, and I think it's horrible, and I don't want that world to exist. And that's... well, that's kind of it. You know, it's preaching to the choir, I, I already get it, and because it's an old-school dystopian story, odds are that the characters and storyline aren't going to be that interesting either, so there's nothing really new there for me to get into. And I just... I don't know, I don't think it would be healthy for me to spend too much time having my beliefs validated by outside people. Like, that creates sort of an echo chamber effect, and... Eh, I, I don't know, I just... I, I'm not interested in the book, and the other stuff is secondary. Interview with the Vampire, or any of its many sequels. Now, I saw the movie for this, and I hated it. It was stupid and dumb, and I'm not gonna judge the book based on the movie, but the thing is, from what I've seen, it follows the book pretty closely, and... Well, okay, I'm not interested in that, and the story is just kind of like, rich dude is sad, rich dude becomes vampire, rich vampire dude stays sad for a couple hundred years, and then he talks to Christian Slater, and Christian Slater writes down his life story. And, um, alright. You know, it's just, there's not that much there that interests me. Obviously, it's the journey, not the destination, and some of the stuff that occurs partway through the story is a little bit more interesting, but I just didn't like how it never really led to anything. And I know that the later sequels go off the fucking rails. <laughs> like, I, I've heard plenty about them, and just, whoa, Anne Rice, what were you thinking? But uh, th they sound like they go a little too off the rails for me, so I'm not interested. And from what I've heard, Anne Rice was really bad about not letting her editors properly edit her books, so they went uh, to print with, like, spelling errors and plot holes and stuff like that, so yeah, that, that probably just, just, no, I'm, I'm not interested. Anything by James Patterson. Now, I've talked a little bit of shit about him in the past, which, I mean, he seems like a nice enough guy from what I've seen, but his writing is crap, you know, the prose is crap, it's just like, chapter one, there was a man, chapter two, the man went to work, chapter three, on his way to work, a car blew up, chapter four, he is now a spy, like, it, it, it's really bad, and I'm not a fan of it, uh, even though Sometimes the actual storylines themselves sound good on paper, at least. Like, he writes thrillers and mysteries and stuff, which are fun once in a while. But I just... I've definitely outgrown any interest I had in him. And that that includes his 
Oh, excuse me. That includes his young adult stuff as well. Like, people have told me to pick up Daniel X or something, or Witch and Wizard is another example. <clears throat> and I read the first book of both of those series many years ago, but I, even as a kid, I thought they weren't very good, so I don't think my opinion would change much now, you know? <clears throat> Maybe at some point in the future, I will uh, read them just to roast them, but I can't see myself enjoying them. And last up, we have The Dresden Files. This one has been suggested to me about 12 million times, and I've always refused because I just don't like urban fantasy. Yeah, it's it, it's a personal reason, a very kind of a petty one, really, but I just, I just don't like urban fantasy that much. You know, the story of, okay, there's this magical guy living in our world, and he has to keep the magic world hidden at all costs, and pretty much every plot line is just him trying to keep the magic world hidden, because if the two worlds mix, then that would be bad for some reason. You know, there's barely ever any urban fantasy where, like, the masquerade of vampires and wizards and stuff has broken down, and they ha have assimilated into regular human society, and so he regular human society gets to see how magic works and I integrate that into their everyday lives. You know, that would be cool, but Pretty much no urban fantasy I've ever read has done that, and Dresden Files just sounds dumb, and I don't like it. If you're a fan of Dresden Files, then, you know, more power to you. I'm I'm sure they're fun books. The, I'm sure there's stuff to enjoy about them. Uh, I've heard Jim Butcher is a really nice guy, but I just, I just don't want to read him. Thunk to patron names you see here, and thank also to $10 and up, Oppo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Christopher Quinten, Embis, Great Gibo, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Micah Phone, Sad Mardigan, Samuel Nevin, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Vevictus. Without you guys, this would not be possible. And if you want to get your name on here, and you want to participate in stuff like polls to determine what my next video topic will be, or early access to my videos, then consider becoming a patron. If not, then maybe become a channel member, because that's a thing now. And uh, I, I'm not good at outros, so um, goodbye. See you later.